So a few days ago when I got my new mini Crooked River, I, like any good social media knife bro who buys knives primarily for internet points instead of cutting things, I uploaded some half-assed pictures to Instagram, Reddit, and Imager and waited for the likes to come in. Now, I thought about blade forms, but I decided not to because that would be spamming. Anyway, Instagram bro, Embrace the Suck said, and I quote, If an animal isn't processed during this review, I'll leave a very mediocre comment. Very mediocre. Alright buddy, you got your wish. However, I can promise him without any caveats, I will make an extremely mediocre review. Also, a manual be added to the discussion. Hashtag Beer Michigan. Sorry, and um, say hello to your daughter. So before everyone falls asleep or can't finish one of my videos for the ninth time, is it the ninth time? Let's go over the dimensions, like the overall length and weight. In parentheses, you'll see the dimensions for the man-sized Crooked River. Blade length and cutting edge. It's still about a three and a quarter inch cutting edge. Oh, I mean three and a quarter inch ish. Yeah, that's right. Handle size, grip area. You know, if I didn't say ish, someone would complain it was 3.18 and not 3.25. Get it right. And spine thickness and handle thickness. Plus, I do occasionally screw. Um, you know, these dimensions up. And the tallness closed. Ah, shit, I forgot. Oh, shit, forgot again. The Benchmade Crooked River Mini is not a mini version in the classical sense. Like, say, the Mini Griptilian versus the Standard Griptilian is. Like this. The Benchmade Crooked River Mini is more like a normal size knife for the rare people who don't hunt large game as their day job. Both knives feature the same clip point blade style, the Mini of course being the smaller proportion version. Clip points are identifiable by the appearance of having the forward section of the blade clipped down by a third. This blade style lends itself to piercing things like the belly of an elk or the plastic wrap around some grass fed beef from a machine killed cow. The clip point blade is made from S30V that features a flat grind just like the full size. The finish looks like it has somewhere between a satin and stone washed look, depending on how the light hits it or how much you've had to drink. S30V is a good stainless steel known for its wear resistance, corrosion resistance, but not resistance to people bitching about it being in a knife more than $100. The lockup is handled by an axis lock that holds up well to whacking it, in case you were wondering. You deploy the knife by the thumb studs up top, or you can do it the other way and pull back the axis lock and flick your wrist, as per my demonstration here. As far as all of my knives with axis locks, this one was a little muddy out of the box. I added some 3-in-1 to get it ready, but if you saw my spam over on R Knife Club, you knew that already. Tovarish Works did. Then a light twist of the pivot, and it made it much nicer. The blade doesn't fall quite like my full-size Crooked River, but that may have more to do with it having a heavier blade. It still ain't quite like my Griptilian deployment or my 941, but those are both broken in more from fidgeting and some beatings, of course. Also, if you bounce the knife and fling it downward just right, you can get it to deploy. It's hard to do, but you can do it. I mean, if you can't, you're a weak failure, but you should probably be able to. Blade retention when closed is pretty good, I reckon. The handle. The ergonomics on the original Crooked River were very good. Great for big hands, and this one is pretty good, too. Not for as large of hands, but still, you know, my size fits it well. If you've ever held the 941 before, it has about the same amount of hand room as that, but with a more pronounced curve. In fact, the ergonomics and the hand feel were probably a big reason why the Crooked River was so popular and people liked it so much. There's a little recessed jimping above the axis lock, but it doesn't do a whole lot for me as my thumb sits further up the blade spine. The handle is comprised of stabilized diamond wood handle scales, and aluminum bolsters over skeletonized stainless steel liners. The wood scales on this are slightly darker than on the full-size Crooked River, and the bolsters also look slightly different. The full-size had aluminum bolsters, but although the product description on Blade HQ and Knife Center say aluminum for the mini Crooked River, it looks titanium-ish to me. There's definitely a difference. The original one has a more stonewashed tumble look to it too. The Mini saves about two full ounces over the full size, and much of this has to do with a lot of consideration taken into weight saving everywhere. 
thinner liners, thinner blade stock, thinner bolsters, thinner handle. It's almost a completely different knife that looks the same, which doesn't make any sense if you say it out loud. This doesn't mean the knife is flimsy, it just feels sturdy. But if you know anything about my opinions on knife trends in general is that I think many knives are overbuilt for no structural reason. Also, and everything needs to be tactical. That said, the original Crooked River is still kind of lightweight for its size too. Since the handle is smooth and refined, it may be hard to hold in slick conditions like elk controls or KY Jelly. It has a very nice comfortable handle, although I wouldn't call it the grippiest knife out there. The Paramilitary 2 still has an overall grippier feel if you need it, and if you don't, good for you. The clip. The clip without taking it off, measuring it with calipers, looks to be about a complete carryover from the full size. Seems to be the only carryover other than maybe some of the screws. The clip is a split phallus style that's not deep carry. Expect about three quarters of an inch to stick out of your pocket while sitting at your computer desk. It's reversible to the right or left side in a tip-up configuration, which is ideal. It has a good amount of springiness and slides into the pocket easy, but also grips it because it's a clip. I like it. All right, how about a slightly larger than usual size comparison section? I personally think this is my new favorite Benchmade, maybe even more than the 941. How about your opinion? Do you think it's my new favorite Benchmade too? But we have to look at a few knives to give it some context. First, the Mini Crooked River. Feels like a lifelong companion or student loan of a knife. Okay, maybe not that. Not too big, not too small, under four ounces, so it's just right. Especially since Benchmade has paid me large sums of money to say this. So let's look at the full size. It's also a beautiful knife. Now that's something I don't even say about most people. Maybe I should though. Is it okay to like a knife more than people? Discuss. However, as Smiling Gator put it over on Instagram, if you're a hunter, it might be too small of a folding knife. Noted, unless of course it's just tree rats. That said, everyone prefers different styles of knives depending on what sort of alternative lifestyle they live. I don't hunt much as an adult because the store and work and I make stupid YouTube videos, but I do like a good knife for daily things like opening packages of other knives and breaking down Amazon boxes of knives and cutting my meat into small, chewable pieces. The Mini does it very well. The full size is too big a knife to carry at work for me, so it doesn't see a whole lot of pocket time. All right, how about the Paramilitary 2 from Spyderco? Also a great knife, one of my top five, depending on what emoji I'm feeling. It's a grippier knife, mostly the poop one. The G10 scales and the handle shape and the blade jimping add points of friction for theoretical wet conditions and supposed harder cutting. I for one do mostly boring things with my knives, but you know that. So both this and the Mini Crooked River work well for me. I know I review knives, but is $180 too much for an everyday carry with S30V? Benchmade doesn't seem to think so, but most people outside of the knife community think $180 is insane. Who's wrong? The knife community and the knife makers who sell to them, or the rest of the world? Discuss. Now the 941. This is an ounce lighter, which admittedly isn't a big deal when the knives have a similar footprint. I mean, it's noticeable, but at some point a knife just becomes lighter. I don't know what point that is, but that's for you to decide. I tend to equally carry knives that are four ounces or less. Ish. I like to think that the clip point of the Mini Crooked River is more versatile because it's more pokier than the 941. All right, let's look at the other Mini that you may be familiar with from Benchmade, the Mini Griptilian. A smaller knife with a smaller handle and a smaller blade. Had the Mini Crooked River come out before the full size, it may not have been called the Mini, but also Benchmade couldn't have sold two Crooked Rivers to us suckers. I like the Crooked River Mini better and may not have bought the full size had it been the other way around. The Mini Grip is about a hundred dollar knife, however. I feel like the price of the Crooked River is, you know, Mini should be about 120 to 140. Mm, let's see, any others? How about the 765? You remember this one? We did this review a very long time ago. The Crooked River has a much better hand feel, slightly larger proportions, and $100 less. I don't know why you would buy that one. Unless you like titanium in Bowler M390. And finally, the Bug Out. Yeah, what about it? Maybe my fourth favorite Benchmade, and sixth if you count gold glasses I don't own, or maybe tenth then. Hmm. I'm not good with math. All right, we're sort of done. I think the Crooked River Mini might be my favorite Benchmade knife ever. If you are still subscribed in six months, I mean, I wouldn't be, but if you are, ask me again then. It has a very useful blade style for everyday carry. It's light, the handle is the right size, it looks good, like me when I've had a few drinks. 
I don't know. What else should I tell you? I guess if I have to point out one or two nitpicks that you may have already noticed, but if you're not a knife person, maybe you haven't. It'd be that I think it's a bit too expensive for me to tell everyone they need it. And maybe a deep carry clip would have been an improvement. Then a few people who hate deep carry clips would have complained and it wouldn't be the damn internet if everyone agreed about everything. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel, give the video a thumbs up, follow me on Instagram, and write Benchmade a love letter about how you like this video and they should give me a whole bunch of free knives. Believe it or not, they must have felt a disturbance because they are sending me the fact to review. So that's cool. Anyway, now if I could get Spyderco to even acknowledge my emails, or even Cold Steel, then we'd be set. Thanks for watching.